What's up guys, Coco Jobro here and welcome back to another DVD video. In today's video, we're going to be going over a killer guide for the newest killer, Sadako. That is right, the Ringu killer is here. She's been out for about a week and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a bunch of good knowledge to help you improve your gameplay. There are going to be timestamps below, so if you guys want to just skip to the parts that fit your needs, go ahead and do that. And also too, if you guys like this video as you're watching it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe because we are going to be definitely putting out more new content for her other killers great builds you're going to love it so what we're going to be going over strictly is her base kit her knowledge right we got to know about her her power her her stats there's also little things that you guys may not know about her teleporting times uh how does the condemn status work and also to what is her power entirely because it's very complicated i'm also going to be going over some play styles some strategies I'm gonna go over her perks and also to which perks of hers go well with other killers because also too you might not like her and want to main someone else so we're gonna go over some of those and then lastly I really want to go over uh, just some beginner builds for you guys if you are new to killer um, and if you guys are really good at killer then we're gonna go over some advanced builds and technically my favorite build for her because I love playing aggressive I've been playing uh, DVD for about 4,000 hours and I just love going hard on survivor teams. Definitely putting on the pressure helps you win games, but also to playing consistently will help you win games as well. And then in the end, I'm just gonna give you my overall opinion. You might hear people say, oh, you know, she's really strong. She's very, very good at applying pressure. And other people are like, dude, she's weak. She's a C tier, D tier killer. And honestly, there's some things that I have to say that you probably haven't heard before. So let's pretty much get right into it. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to look at her her power, right? This is who she is. This is her backstory. And her power is called the Deluge of Fear. You can see right here, she is a 115% killer. That's how fast she walks. She has a terror radius of 24 and she's short. These two things make her really good in terms of sneaking up on survivors. You have no terror radius until you get to survivors, right? No terror radius. And then once you do have a terror radius, you already get an eight meter jump versus the other killers on the roster she's short so she can hide underneath certain tall loops and it really helps her with her element of surprise now deluge of fear this power can be broken down into three different parts you have her manifestation you have her projection and then you also have her condemned so we'll briefly go through this um, when she is invisible they call that d manifest and when she's in the physical state that's a manifest state so when you are d manifest or invisible you're kind of like the wraith so you can go around the map no one can see you until you get into 24 meters of your survivors once you do that then you start blinking in and out of the physical and unphysical state if you will and then the survivors can see you now you can use use this to your advantage if you have uh, that transition state between D manifest to manifest you start to blink a little bit and that can really mess with survivors and you also have a lingering undetectable status so when you're undetectable they can't hear you they don't know and you can sneak around corners and get a good hit on them so that's a really good thing that you want to use to your advantage now when you're D manifest it's going to not give a terror radius so you have this really good sneak attack ability right just like wraith now you kind of transition into freddy where you get to teleport across the map or kind of like the demogorgon so after a minute there will be little tvs around the map that will spawn and if you have a really good rng you'll have these tvs spawn next to gens and you'll be able to teleport to them when you're invisible or d manifest and then you can teleport to them and sneak up on survivors too because you are undetectable for just about a second or two and then your terror radius comes back so it's a really really good um, opportunity to get some good hits now the thing is you do give sound audio cues to the survivors and it makes this weird like high pitch noise and it's directional so they can tell if they know where a TV is like oh you're coming from that TV so you definitely want to apply pressure fast and once you get out of the TV use that speed boost that you get for about a second and, and get in there and try to catch up to survivors. Now after you use that projection uh, the TVs will turn off and they won't come back on until 100 seconds and we'll go back into those stats in just a second. 
Now, when you teleport to a TV that's near a survivor, if they are within 16 meters, then they become condemned. Now, they have seven stacks of condemn until they become moriable, if you will, and they will give away an, a killer instinct, which is like a heartbeat noise for you to know that, hey, that survivor is going to be insta-kill if I can get them down on the ground. So they're not one shot like a no-ed or uh, maybe like a devour hope stack or something. They're not exposed. But once you get that survivor down, they become moriable, and it only takes about two seconds to pretty much execute that mori. So you'll get a, a killer instinct, you'll get a red ring around the survivor's icon. So if it's a mag, for instance, you'll know, okay, that mag is the one that I need to focus on. And you'll, you'll see wherever they are around the map, and you'll see their heartbeat go on there. So that's really, really good. You definitely want to take advantage of that because that saves downing that saves pretty much picking up a survivor because you do need to down them but it saves picking up a survivor taking them to a hook hooking them and then hooking them for maybe two more times you literally get to skip all of that and kick them out of the game if they don't do that if they don't do their their t uh their vhs tapes is what it is now every time you do teleport they get one stack and after you teleport enough they're gonna want to remove that stack. And the only way they can remove it is by getting tapes and taking it to another cassette tape that's pretty much across the map. And if they hold the tape, it lingers and they'll continue to get more condemned until their bar is full. So that's how you fill it up. Teleport more or they have to pick up a tape. Now, you can't have them fill up their bar if you're chasing them or if you're near them. Their bar won't fill up if they have a tape in their hand. So kind of keep that into, into your, um, mine now looking at her perks real quick i just want to share with these scorch hook it's a really really good one the floods of rage it's like a barbecue and chili once someone gets unhooked you'll know where all the survivors are on the map so you know where two of them are because one is on the hook the other one's the rescuer maybe someone else is doing a gen and maybe someone's like picking their nose in the basement or something who knows right we don't know what they're doing now this is really good because if they're not doing gens, then you can relax. But if they are doing gens, then maybe you can teleport, right? Demanifest, teleport to that gen, and then you can apply pressure to that one person while the other people are healing at the hook. You got Call of Brine. This is a really good perk. I really, really love this perk a lot. Mainly what this perk does is every time you kick a gen, it becomes yellow and then it regresses at 200%. This is literally like an on-call hex ruin. That's a, a hag perk. And pretty much the gen just regresses at 200%. It's a really good, it's a really good perk because also too, if they get back on the gen, then they hit a good skill check, then you get a notification and you know, hey, I need to go back. And every time you kick a gen, this perk resets. It has no cooldown. This is a really great perk to run with like, barbecue and chili so you can go over there run it with pop it's just really good it's super good you can see gens just regress in seconds it's amazing over here we have the merciless storm now survivors whenever they get the gen to 90 percent they get a relentless um, amount of skill checks this is similar to the yellow glyph that is in the tomes where once you get that glyph you have to just hit the skill checks and then boom you get it so it's the same thing here if they're really good at it this perk really doesn't do much for you if they mess up then the gen is blocked for 20 seconds in my personal opinion i don't think that this is really amazing because it honestly it honestly doesn't really work by the time you're downing someone and you pick them up and you put them on a hook you know, the survivor that was doing the gen is probably long gone, or they might get back on the gen by the time it, it goes away. It's, it's just really not that good. It's, eh, it's whatever. All right. So now I want you guys to look over here. Um, if you guys go to the wiki, this is where I get a lot of my information from. The wiki has all the stuff that you need. So right here, we got everything that we need. Ring of fire is our attack. There's her percentage. Bada bing, bada boom. One thing that I do want to mention is that when you go from de-manifest to manifest, invisible to physical, you actually slow down for one and a half seconds, and it takes you down from 115% all the way down to 92%. But if you go from physical to invisible, then you go from 115% to 115%. It's really cool. It's awesome. Um, but I want to move down here. You could see all her perks. Everything's right there stories right here just gonna scroll through this real quick 
her different perks. It shows you what tier three is. So for seven seconds, you can see everyone with Scorch Hook um, Floods of Rage. This is really good to combo with the artist's Pain Resonance Scorch Hook. So you can hit people um, with a Scorch Hook Pain Res. It blows up the gen. Then you know someone, if they're on that gen, they will scream. And then also too, when they unhook that person from that Scorch Hook, then you'll see all the survivors. Really good. Call of Brian, 200% regression for 60 seconds. Awesome, if they don't touch it. And then the uh, Merciless Storm, 20 seconds, if they uh, mess up on the gen. For a level 40 teachable, I don't think it's worth it. It really isn't. Um, again, you're undetectable and uh, survivors can't hear you when you are invisible. Um, they get condemned status if they are within 16 meters, like I mentioned. Killer instinct for six seconds when their meter becomes full at seven stacks, and then they have to collect the VHS tapes. Um, mainly just all the information I was telling you about manifesting, you slow down when uh, you go from de-manifest to manifest, and then um, one penalty for if they're next to the TV. Um, Pretty much that's just everything right there that I've been talking about. And again, just something to reiterate is when you teleport to a TV, that TV does uh, not turn back on for 100 seconds. But if they actually insert their tape or if they turn it off and the survivors mess with your TVs, it comes back in a minute. So don't freak out about that. Um, other than that, the main thing that I wanted to just show you on this page is the teleportation time. So when you are projecting, going from invisible into a TV, that whole animation takes about three seconds. So if you hook someone, you see barbecue, oh snaps, there's a Meg running to the Claudette on the hook. Let me teleport preemptively because if it's going to take me about two and a half seconds, that's roughly around the time it takes for a survivor to unhook their friend. So you want to get in there, make sure to teleport right away and, and show your work and, and get that chase down, get that hit down. Do what you have to do in order to make sure that you're applying pressure as this killer and doing what you need to do. So I'm going to actually kind of just go into the whole what's her strategy, right? How do I play this killer? And roughly I kind of mentioned it, but the main tips that I want to give you is one start your chases early don't be afraid to keep looping right just get into the chase that's the first thing you want to get in the chase yes there are going to be pallets around so make sure to try to backpedal or play around that use your small height to your advantage use manifest and demanifest to your advantage get some jump hits on people so that you can uh, make sure to get them injured and get them down the second thing that you want to do is you want to start teleporting. There's so many Sadakos who don't even teleport. They just go in biz and then they become, you know, manifest, demanifest. You want to keep teleporting. Get those condemn stacks because if you get condemn stacks on the survivors, then you start to become like the pig when they have the head traps, right? Oh crap, if I don't get this trap off my head, then I'm going to die. If I don't get this cassette tape into the TV, then I'm one shot moreable if the killer finds me, right? So start teleporting. Number two, start teleporting. Do it, do it, do it. Don't be afraid like, oh man, I might not have a TV. Don't worry about that. Just keep teleporting and get those condemned stacks because maybe the early game for you might not be strong, but the mid game and the late game can be very, very strong for this killer. And you can definitely, definitely apply so much pressure that towards the end, the teams are not even gonna be doing gens. They're gonna be worrying about their condemned stacks or they're gonna be worrying about unhooking or just trying to heal and survive. So definitely apply that pressure. So that's the second thing you wanna do. And then number three is learn the timing between teleporting and demanifesting and manifesting um it's it got she got buffed so it only takes a second but you definitely want to do your best to learn how to curve around corners as you're manifesting so that you can come out get the jump scare maybe even grab someone off of a gen or at least get the hit so then once you're doing your chase all you have to do is hit them once getting those jump hits are, are the best thing so number one start the chase don't worry about pallets just keep going do your thing number two Project, 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 teleport everywhere. Uh, just applying pressure and making survivors just confuse and and 
and just feel like they're uncomfortable, they're not in control of their own match, is what killers need to be doing. And this can apply to any killer. And then number three is just again, uh, make sure to practice your demanifest and manifest. Okay. So I hope that helps you guys. Hope that's what you need to hear because that's what you need to do. Um, don't forget. When survivors are on gens, it takes them 80 seconds to do a gen. If they're with a friend, it takes them about roughly 45 seconds. And if they are with um, three people, then it's going to take them, you know, roughly like 33 seconds. So definitely get that first chase down. Once you do that, then there's only three people doing gens. You got one person on the hook. Someone's got to go save, right? So now only two people are on gens. Then those two people are going to start healing and then you can start applying pressure to the other person and then only one person's on a gen once you start getting that circuit going you'll do great okay let's go over to builds right so if you're a beginner then i think this build will work really well for you advanced people just give me a second so as a beginner what i would run is this build right here i'm going to switch over to the cinebite so this is a really 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 simple build that you can use uh, bitter murmur you don't have to unlock this by any killer whenever people do gens you'll know which direction they're going for five seconds and when all the gens are done then you'll know where all the survivors are on the map for 10 seconds are they near a door are they healing in a corner what are they doing this gives you a lot of good information jolt now this is the demogorgon's perk uh, i would highly recommend unlocking this and mainly what it does is whenever you down a survivor, you are able to blow up any gens that are around you with your basic attack. Uh, if you didn't know, the Sadako is only a basic attack killer, so this works perfectly with her. You take 8% off the gen and it starts regression. Uh, Sloppy Butcher, it considerably increases the survivor's bleeding frequency, so you can see where they're bleeding. You can find out if they're like trying to run one way and then walk another way just follow the blood marks it's really good if you suck at you know following scratch marks and then also too it slows down the healing so that you're able to buy more time if uh they injure you can buy yourself more time in chases or them not doing gems okay and then the last one this one's a free perk too as well this is no one escapes death when the game is over you can one shot survivors so if you're learning this is a great crutch perk but i would really highly recommend do not use this perk um for the long run just use it maybe to get some wins to build your morale um, as you're learning the killer but then later maybe switch to something different okay um but the main build that i would say for her that i really like is this one it's highly aggressive it's very good and this is what it is once you get that first hook you're gonna start using barbecue and chili we all know how it works any survivors that are 40 meters away you'll know their direction where they're at on the map use the the projection teleport to the tvs and get in there and apply pressure number two is dead man switch if they are on a gen you will be able to kick them off of the gen and they will not be able to be on that gen for 45 seconds. This is Death Slinger's perk. The other one was the Cannibal's perk. This one's really good. I have a video. Um, I'll put it on the screen right now. That video, you'll see so much value that I got from Dead Men Switch is not even funny. Just kicking them off of gens, making them feel pressured. Even if you pass by someone that's on a gen and scare them, then they can't do the gens for a while. It buys you so much time. If they do get off the gen for whatever reason, then you can use Call of Brian, kick that gen, regress it, get off that solo survivor if they're on a one person, two person gen, kick them off of it, chase them. Maybe their friends might not get back on that perk and eat, or back on that gen. And even if they do get back on that gen, you'll get the notification when they get that good skill check. You can get over there. It works like a charm. And then the last one is Scorch Hook, um, Pain Resonance. This is the artist perk. Mainly whenever you hook them on a Scorch Hook, that gen pops that has the most uh, value on it or is the most progress. It lets you know if anyone's on it. One, two, three. If the whole team's on it, they'll all scream. And it just gives you good information. Having information as a killer is your most valuable weapon. The second is probably altruism because altruism literally kills teams and it's just amazing. The add-on I love to use is the rickety pinwheel. Whenever they pass next to a TV, they are oblivious and it lingers for seven seconds. It's a really, really, really good. I absolutely love this. It's just so good. 
and then the red the ring drawing if they are healing a friend who is condemned then that condemned spreads and that helps you to create this secondary uh, pig if you will a uh, type pressure it's really really good if anything I would put on the uh, the videotape whenever you hit a survivor after going from manifest or de-manifest to manifest it turns all the TVs back on so once you hook someone and if you have good RNG your TVs will be next to gens hook that person teleport to whatever TV it is do a little de-manifest manifest back and get your TVs constantly on it is so good so much good pressure so finally this is my overall consensus about this killer I think she's incredible I think she's amazing she is really good on open map so that you can literally travel from halfway across the world to the next side of the map it's amazing um, I think she does a really good job around loops and sneaking around people applying pressure even just this external and even internal pressure and and jump scaring and scaring people and they just think she's creepy she's a very weird killer it's very fun the blinking going from intermit to to demanifest to manifest really messes survivors I don't think people have the distinction down whether I'm manifesting or demanifest because when you're invisible you start blinking but when you go from the demanifest to manifest invisible to physical you blink as well so it's really hard to distinguish are you physical or are you invisible are you coming to the physical state i've had so many times where i'm still trying to transition to manifest and then people dead hard super early and i'm like i'm not even hitting you yet i'm still in the in the unphysical world so um it's really good her mind game is is cuckoo dude it's crazy uh weaknesses uh, the biggest weakness is the RNG with the TVs. I hate when I'm in an indoor map and I teleport to a TV and I try to use my speed boost and my TV is literally facing a wall. Um, I think they really need to fix that, make sure the TVs are facing inward. It's very, very bad for this killer um, to function properly. That's when you have to start just using your um, undetectable status to really do well. So. It is what it is. Um, she is pretty basic when it comes to looping. She has no power like artists or hunters um, or any of these killers that have special powers. Um, she's just pretty basic. She can't shred like demo. Um, she can't place a trap like trapper. It's it's pretty basic. So um, she has her perks. She has her weaknesses. I would say she's roughly around a B tier to um, a C tier killer, if you will. Uh, some maps glorify her and other maps just crush her and make her very very unfun to play in certain cir circumstances so but yeah that's pretty much my um my consensus there's other builds there's other videos i have on the channel if you guys want to watch them just go down and and look at our, our previous videos you'll definitely love them if you guys again like this video make sure to hit that like button subscribe to join our community i really appreciate all the support that you guys have been showing i love you guys so much i hope this helps and if it did help you make sure to let me know in the comments below and if there's something i miss make sure to comment below so that new players learning this killer can know those facts so that they can grow in their gameplay thank you again everyone for watching and i'll see you in the next one take it easy guys and good luck out there in the fog